everyone. It's Henry, Apples and Blowers. Good morning. It's actually quite early today. It's around 9.30. I know. Uh, today I'm gonna have a very busy day. Last night we had one hell of a rainstorm and uh, heavy winds. And uh, today is gonna be my engine dismantling day. Uh, basically, I got three engine blocks from my friend Larry. <laughs> I've got two Briggs single overhead valve engines that have blown connecting rods or blown something or other. And I'm going to try to strip all the parts that I could use and maybe put all these parts together for a future engine rebuild. Uh, I know that the connecting rods and stuff are very valuable and uh, I have yet to get one for it. But uh, I think I might be able to get a synchro balancer in here, a couple of links, and some pretty good parts. Uh, there's also a Vanguard engine here, which is very cool, you know, and uh, I've never taken apart a Vanguard engine before, so this will be a first for me. As you recall from a previous episode, I had a small 3.5 horsepower um, Tecumseh Craftsman Edger engine that I actually got running, you know, and it was running pretty well until I was removing the pulley from the crankshaft at one time. And I think that from all the banging, trying to get the pulley off, I might have cracked the connecting rod. So right now it has no compression and it free rolls. So I'm gonna be taking apart uh, four engines today, actually five. The fifth one is the opposed twin engine I got for free, that's right, free, from a local guy here in East Northport. He had a blown opposed twin. He was gonna throw it to the curb. I could use the tins to maybe build a opposed twin engine in the future. Uh, also, I went to go see uh, a new friend, Don from Medford, an associate of Nick's. And uh, he gave me a John Deere 38 inch bagger system for free too. So thank you very much, Don. I gave him some Lucas oil products. My plan is to take that John Deere 38 inch bagger system, which looks complete and in pretty decent shape, right? And fabricate it or retrofit it onto my Toro 6160 turn. The only thing that's missing from that machine is a bagger system. And of course, there's no way you can find that anymore because that thing is like from the 80s and stuff. And there's just, I've never even seen what it, what it looks like, you know, the bagger system for that thing. So uh, I'm not going to wait around for something impossible to show up, you know. And not only that, even if it did show up, it would probably cost a fortune because he probably knows that it's the only one left in existence. So I'm just going to fabricate one and try to make it work. Hey, as long as it sucks up leaves, right? Who cares if it's OEM or not? Anyway, I mentioned last night that we had some really bad winds. I had a big branch that was just like hanging from the last storm. And I was just wondering when that damn limb was going to come down. Last night was the day. So it's a pretty big limb. You know, I should just kind of I don't get to use this very often, but when I do get a chance to use it, I'm all for it. This is my brand new Remington Outlaw RM 4220, something like that. It's a 20 inch chainsaw. And I got this, as you guys recall from a previous episode, free. Because I had an old one that didn't work from a trade or something and the serial number matched the recent uh, Consumer uh, Product Safety Commission recall from MTD South. And basically I gave them my serial number, they sent me a new saw, and this is it. I've used, I've had it for uh, five years, and only used it like maybe five times uh, for five different storms, getting tree branches down and all. Uh, it works great, but there was one time that I took it to my mom's house where it just stopped working altogether. And the reason behind that was because so much sawdust 
had reached the air filter in here. The air filter in here is this mesh yucky thing. Stupid design. Totally gets clogged. The uh, dust gets through the mesh easily right into the carburetor. So uh, they need to change that into like a foam or paper instead of a mesh plastic vinyl one. You know, it just doesn't work. Anyway, um, from what I remember, this fires up just fine. Yes, I know, the chain's a little loose. As long as it doesn't come off. All right, so, uh, start. I may not have any gasage in here, but I'm gonna use it until it runs out. That's some gasage. Choke. There we go, you hear that? Once you hear that, That's it. That's all it takes. You're probably saying, hey, Henry, you really shouldn't be using your chainsaw while you're wearing slippers. Well, back in the Middle Ages, or uh, the caveman days, those cavemen didn't even have shoes. They probably used their chainsaws without shoes. You know what I mean? So uh, not to mention the fact that, oh, if I put on sneakers, oh, this thing won't cut through sneakers gonna cut you it's gonna cut you it doesn't matter what you're wearing unless you're wearing like cement blocks on your feet you still might get cut <laughs>
giving mowers life again. As you saw, I've been taking apart this uh, uh, opposed twin engine. Much to my dismay, however, this is actually a 40 cubic inch opposed twin engine. I only have parts for a 42 cubic inch engine. So the piston and connecting rod, the one that's left over, because out of the two, one broke, the other one was still good. As a result, 
The journal on that crankshaft is done! The other journal's okay, but I can't use that crankshaft. It's too far gone. Can't even muric acid it or sandpaper it. Just gouge too deep, you know? Flywheel's good. I had some trouble getting the flywheel off, I'm not gonna lie, because uh, the sump was off, so the crankshaft was moving on the inside as I'm trying to get leverage to push upwards on the uh, flywheel. As you can see, the camshaft is also Donsky! I'm not sure whether or not I broke it while trying to remove it, or it was already broken. I'm not sure, but either way, I can't use it. Uh, so I got the uh, exhaust valves out, no problem. Then I forgot how the keepers go on the intake valve. It's like these two discs are together and they won't separate, even though I've compressed the uh, spring with the uh, spring compressor. So I gotta go inside and go do some research on YouTube or something. And uh, I can't go inside the house. At least that's what my wife says, if your hands are greasy. <laughs> I, would, I would tend to agree. Anyway, today I'm using some of Joe's hand cleaner. This is the hand scrub version. I have the uh, all-purpose one that I've tried, uh, but this is the second one I'm trying. This is the hand scrub. I would think the hand scrub is more potent than the uh, all-purpose. So what better time to use it than <laughs> having your hands absolutely full of grease. Okay, so you know what? Same similar smell, but different consistency. This uh, hand scrub version, I feel the uh, sandiness of it. There's like some sand consistency in it to help you get more uh, dirt out of your hands, you know? So this is very good too. This is for really dirty jobs, you know? <laughs> and this is waterless. So you guys could just put it on your hands, do some scrubbage, and then wipe it on your shirt, you know? Anyway, uh, I gotta go inside, figure out how those keepers come off because I am not getting rid of this engine without taking the intake valves out because one day, I'm gonna need them! Go check out joeshandcleaner.com uh, from Yukon, Oklahoma. I forgot, I gotta show you what it looks like when I wipe it off, right? <laughs> Anybody can just scrub it on. Anybody can do that. Anybody can just go out and buy parts and make an attractor. No, you gotta fabricate it. Make it work yourself. Anybody can go buy parts. Make your own parts. Anyway, just taking an old yucky towel here just to wipe off the excess uh, cleaner solvent. My hands feel so clean, I can go and perform surgery now. So the trick is gravity. I didn't find anything on YouTube uh, that specifically addressed the keepers for this uh, intake valve. So I figured gravity, put it this way, right? You've got this compression tool here. You just wiggle it. There's a spring in the compression tool. Valve goes here. It's actually quite interesting. I did it before, of course, I, I built some, a couple of opposed twins where I had to remove the keepers. This goes like that. You got these keepers here that go like that. And that's why I had the magnet out because you need a magnet to suck them out. But I couldn't compress the spring well enough to um, you know, have that much clearance. But gravity and pushing this down and then just wiggling a little bit and these keepers came out. So that's how you remove the, uh, I wanna say exhaust. Exhaust valve, no intake valve because it's on the top here. Oh, exhaust valve, I'm sorry. So this is the exhaust valve, okay? So I'm gonna use the same technique, taking the other one out of the other side. Shout out to Tom Shrek from Smyrna, Tennessee for buying a Dunsky sticker. 
keep the sticker sales coming guys uh, like I said I don't have a job this is my full-time job so every sticker sale helps me keep the videos coming every day so I'm finally finished uh, I want to show you I've got the flywheel here top 10 this uh, crankshaft is done ski this engine block is done ski camshaft is done ski and I think it was broken before I got to it because one of the tappets are broken so there was tremendous trauma to that area there's the other half of that camshaft so uh, also the sump is done ski. Sump, block, crank, one tap it, one cam, it's done ski. Got my heads, double stack pulley, breather, uh, muffler, governor, air filter, sump bolts, head bolts, uh, two pistons, one connecting rod, rear access panel, intake manifold, carburetor, Valves intake and exhaust, engine cover, got some good stuff here. Although I think it's a smaller engine though, but um, it's a 40 cubic inch. I've, I've got parts for a 42. But anyway, I'm going to be putting all that crap into this box and putting it to the curb. And <laughs> now I've got to do more right there. I'm going to see how much I get done. It's only around noon, so I've got all day. So I just took apart this engine over here. Um, this engine is Dunsky. The block is at least. Then the second engine, I was about to take it all apart, but then uh, I noticed that the sump was still on there. So I took the sump off and I took a look at the inside. And honestly, fellas, I couldn't find anything wrong with it. Connecting rod is still attached. It moves freely. Piston moves up and down. Took the camshaft off. It was fine. Governor looks fine. Synchro balancer looks fine. Everything looked fine. So I put a layer of silicone over the existing gasket and it was still okay. As you can see everything looks good so I'm not really exactly sure what was wrong with this engine I'll probably find out later I forgot if he told me anything but everything seems to look fine it's uh, missing a head of course and uh, I'm not sure uh, what cubic inch engine this is because it says nothing on the connecting rod usually it says like 28 through 31 or something like that or 42 It'll say something on there but that's a blank uh, connecting rod it says nothing on it but I could probably tell what kind it is by looking at the camshaft and the synchro balancer because the 17 horsepower ones and higher the synchro balancer looks like this that doesn't look like that also the uh, camshaft for that looks like that which is different from this this one's like a solid camshaft then this uh, synchro balancer is more of a solid steel thing, you know, with um, more blocky. Anyway, uh, I'm just going to put this back together again. Uh, the flywheel is here, and the flywheel has that aluminum ring around it, which means that this one takes a um, plastic ring gear for a starter. As you could also see it's missing a couple of magnets. That's going to be a an issue for sure but uh, we'll see what happens I'll just put this back together again and, uh, maybe I can rebuild this engine someday when I need it okay so as you can see I took the uh, 3.5 horsepower Tecumseh edger engine off of my uh, power washer stand and I put that engine that I think is still good um, I cleaned the head, the cylinder top there, and the head contact. Uh, I'm a little confused. I'm, I'm not sure whether or not I even have a head for that. 
Um, I think this cover goes with this engine. And on this engine cover, it says 28N707. I thought that was a flathead, you know? So is this a flathead? I can't even, I'm so confused right now, I don't even know. But uh, I can't use this flywheel on there because this flywheel is missing a couple of magnets. As you know, I have a 13.5 horsepower flathead that has bad valves. Maybe I'll just use the parts from that one and make this one, you know, maybe. In the meantime, I'm up to my third engine, actually fourth, and this what this is what looks like a Vanguard. As you can tell, it's got that double engine uh, cover on it, right? So that top engine cover comes off. There's another engine cover identical to that that other one, the 28N707 one, and uh, I'm gonna check it out and see if I can use that head and that flywheel to build this engine. Um, so we'll see what happens. So here are the remnants of the Vanguard, quote unquote, Vanguard engine. I mean, I think it's a Vanguard engine because of the, the double shrouds. You guys could uh, make heads or tails out of it. Let me know. But it's, uh, like I said, it's uh, 311777. 311777, the double shrouds I always think is a Vanguard engine. You experts, let me know if, you, if that is indeed a Vanguard engine. If you've never commented before, please just comment. Uh, we don't bite. So um, it is a blown connecting rod and of course the engine block has a hole in it. So this block is Dunsky. So the block is Dunsky. That block on the bottom is Dunsky. And while I looked at the camshaft, right, it looks okay until you turn it over here. So you can see the ACR or automatic compression release is done ski and unfortunately you can't repair the ACRs on the cams if the if the uh, ACR is broken you need to get a new cam it's just the way it is uh, here is the piston from the Vanguard quote-unquote Vanguard and uh, this is it had a 28 to 31 cubic inch connecting rod in it so being that you're allowed to use a 28 in here, that engine over there is a 28. So I'm thinking that I could use its flywheel and head. The flywheel off the Vanguard has good magnets and it looks identical to this one with the exception of the aluminum ring gear on it. I took the Vanguard stator and put it on and this is the Vanguard head, and it fits perfectly. 
with good exhaust and intake uh, push rods. So I think I'm gonna have enough parts to build this engine. What do you guys think about that? Pretty cool, huh? I'll save this uh, Vanguard piston for something else. Um, the Vanguard sump is good. The Vanguard governor is good. Tappets, governor shafts, and also the Vanguard crankshaft has a good journal on it still, which is surprising from a blown connecting rod. Good journal and good um, synchro balancer. So that's definitely useful. I'll probably sell the tins off of this and some other miscellaneous parts. Gonna dump uh, these two blocks, I'm, just, uh, uh, I'm sorry, three blocks and sumps into the trash. That's a lot of aluminum right there. It's dirty aluminum, but it's nevertheless aluminum. Got an absolute mess going on over here, but uh, I did all right. Uh, took apart three engines and out of the parts, I think I can make one. It's always good to be able to make an engine, you know, and uh, I'm too tired. I, uh, I was going to take this apart because remember, this thing was running. This thing was running, but then uh, I knocked the pulley off and then it no longer runs. So I think I broke the connecting rod by knocking the pulley off. Too much trauma on the crankshaft, you know what I mean? But uh, yeah, it's got some good parts on it. Recoil starter. You could always use these for lawnmowers, you know what I mean? Gas tank, throttle, all that stuff, muffler. You know, here and there. Uh, I'll, I'll take that off when I have time on the next episode and we'll see whether or not it was indeed the crankshaft, you know? Just after I washed my hands, I get a call from a guy that I sold a uh, lawn tractor to like a year ago. Anyway, he texted me with a picture of an engine, 18.5 uh, Briggs single cylinder engine. And he says, hey, you want it? It uh, needs rings and a head gasket. I'm like, free? He goes, yeah, free. I'm like, okay. I need an engine stand. Gotta go get some gas too. I spent the day uh, unloading my van. I wanted to work on getting that John Deere uh, bagger onto my Toro 616Z, but I uh, just got so involved with uh, tearing down four engines, you know? And uh, much to my surprise, tearing down two similar engines, both Briggs, single overhead valve, one being a 31 cubic inch and one being a 28. Most of them are interchangeable parts. So it looks like out of all that carcass, I could actually make another engine out of it with some other parts that I might have on hand. So that's definitely a bonus if I can get an engine put together from parts, you know what I mean? And of course I've got some very valuable parts here. Uh, I'm always messing with engines, you know, you don't know what I'm gonna get, you know, moving forward. So uh, I'm actually not gonna list any of that stuff because you know what usually happens is I list it for sale and I sell it and then a week later I'll run into something where oh man I wish I didn't sell that you know what I'm saying I'll only start selling these engine parts when I say you know what that's it I'm not doing engines anymore but honestly I kind of like working on engines you know makes your mind think you know it makes you think a lot and uh, you get better at it the more you do you know um, so I'm gonna clean up this mess and go pass out, you know what I mean? Um, thanks a lot for joining me on today's episode, fellas. 
We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey guys, Boba and I want to thank you for all the support of Mowers and Blowers. If you'd like, make a short video clip like these and I'll put it as an outro in my future videos. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey Henry, it's Andy from the UK, aka Mower Wizard. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey Henry, see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey y'all, it's Kylie here, and we'll see you next time on Mowers and Blowers.